All right, y'all, I thought I'd make a second video tonight. Again, peace to the gods, peace to the creator, whatever title and name that you want to give them. We all know we didn't create ourselves, right? So, uh, so I can't really agree with the atheists. <laughs> uh, people like Christopher Hitchin, even though I respect him, he's a smart guy. Um, he didn't create himself. It, if he thinks life is just fucking random, he's terribly mistaken if he thinks life is just random. Who put you together? Who put all the, the systems in your body together? Your heart, your lungs, your liver, your stomach, your nervous system. These systems are too complex for this a mere coincidence, brother. Somebody put your ass together. You best believe that. This shit didn't happen by accident. So anyway, I'm sipping my fucking Heineken and I'm always doing research. But I grabbed this document probably like a year ago after I did my secure party process about the birth certificate. Now, I got a commercial security agreement and a hold harmless agreement against uh, what they say is the straw man, right? But the straw man is really a trust under your name in all capital letters. Uh, a lot of cases you'll go into and like traffic tickets, uh, fines, whatever they are, if you broke a, a city ordinance, a, a code, uh, even a statute, even a state statute, what's happened is you're falling victim uh, to the statute law merchant, right? So actually, the statute law merchant basically uses laws to extract money from the people. Driver's license, building code fines, all that shit. Is the statute law merchant now was established uh, in England um, hundreds of years ago? Matter of fact, since I brought it up, oh yeah, it's my my net app stuff. I'm, yeah, I'm in IT too, so I do a lot of IT stuff. But uh, uh, let's look up the statute law merchant because child support is under this shit too. Uh, let's look at a legal dictionary we look up the step nah it's not long enough that's that's some bullshit right there <laughs> we don't need a better explanation than that okay statute merchant and statute state are two forms of security long obsolete in English practice though references to them still occur in some modern statutes the former security is created da, 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 parliament met the passage Amplified in 1285, where it's named by the British President, the seal of the same reason. Uh, the trade is not the creditor under either form of security. Okay, hold up. Okay, this, okay. Let's, uh, let's read this, because I see the key words where I'm trying to get across. All right, so the form of security was created by the 1283 Statute of Merchants, or Statute of Acton Burrell. Uh, and amplified by the 1285 Statute of Merchants, 1285, whence its name and the latter by an act of 1353, which provided that in every staple, the seal of the staple should be sufficient validity for a bond of record acknowledged and witnessed before the mayor of the staple. They were originally permitted only among traders for the benefit of commerce. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out what that means. The bond of record acknowledged and witnessed before the staple. Well, what do they mean, staple? Let's, let's look this up because I'm learning right along with you guys. Uh, they think I'm talking about the, the store. I ain't talking about no store. Legals. Legal term, staple. Staple, in turn, law, the right of staple is exercised by a people upon foreign merchants is defined, is defined to be that they may not allow them to set their merchandises and wares to sell, but in a certain place. Okay, so it's basically restricting foreigners on where they could sell. 
the mayor of the staple. Okay, they were originally permitted only amongst traders, which makes sense since they're merchants, for the benefit of commerce, but afterwards extended by an act of Henry VIII, 1532, to all subjects, whether traders or not. The creditor, under either form of security, was allowed to seize the goods and hold the lands of a defaulting debtor un until satisfaction of his debt. <coughs> While he held the lands, he was termed he was termed tenant by statute merchant or by statute staple. In addition to the loss of his goods and lands, the debtor was liable to be imprisoned. Statute merchant, owing to the summary method of enforcing payment, was sometimes known as pocket judgment. Both were repealed by the statute law revision of 1863. So now they create statutes to get money because they're acting as a merchant. That's what I'm getting from here. They're acting as a merchant and they're charging you for being on their land. So they got all kind of codes and shit that they want to enforce for the mere fact, uh, I guess, that they're trying to keep the public safe, but also that... Um, yeah, they're trying to keep the public safe, but they know people are going to violate these rules. Come on, it's inevitable that people violate some of these rules, so they know they're going to make money. Yeah, you're going to speed a little bit sometimes. You're not going to stop at every stop sign completely, and they get you on technicality. So anyway, let's keep it pushing here. I want to get into this birth certificate, because the birth certificate is one of the most talked about subjects um, amongst the people that are really into law. And this shit is deep right here. This is the best, probably the best explanation I've ever heard um, of the birth certificate. Because you know, once you register your birth in the program, well, once you register your birth, you're part of a program, just like child support. Once you sign, bam, that's it. You're part of a program. Uh, so anyway, your birth documentation should be straightforward and transparent. However, it soon becomes the most complex and secretive paper trail imaginable. This alone suggests a long history of corruption. The process involves a maze of secret trusts and various parts of legislation Focus on claiming your estate. If you Moorish, you already know about your estate. You know, they told you that you're black, Negro, and colored. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah, you may look black, but you are not black. You came from a nation. Uh, you have a language. You have a birthright to this land. America, you have a birthright to this land. I mean, you were here first, way before the European. Um, anyway, we won't get into that. But basically, uh, the European has usurped the Native American land, our land, and and took your estate by telling you, no, oh no, you're not a Iroquois, you're not, you're not Cherokee, you're not, you're just black. And so with that name, that branding name, uh, there's no country called black there's no black language there's really no black culture there's this english culture so it's imperative that you learn who you are so anyway folk did and they want to take your shit your estate is whatever you make all the property that you've accumulated is your estate so anyway the modern birth certificate began as a settlement certificate issued in england in 1837 to officially record the poor papas you know, like a form of papas, granting basic rights to benefits in exchange for recognition <coughs> of their status as own property, uh, 14th Amendment citizens, U.S. persons, lawful slaves, also known as indentured service and bondsmen. A child's birthplace was its place of settlement, where its bond began. Thus, a settlement is equivalent to a voluntary slave plantation. Since 1933, this is, the, this is when America went bankrupt. 
They want to bankrupt to the bankers, the international bankers, so that now your body, and you actually you're ever since birth, once you register, you're a slave, right? So now your body is being held as a surety whenever you commit a crime or don't pay a, a fine or something like that. A child's birthplace was its place of settlement, where its bond began. Thus, its settlement is equivalent to a voluntary slave plantation. Since 1933, all New Zealanders have been required by statute to have a birth certificate and a tax identification number. Right? A tax identification number is for entities, corporate entities, individual entities, not for flesh and blood human beings. Since 1990, under the United Nations, and the World Health Organization by the Convention on the Rights of the Child, the birth certificate process has become an international system of settlement. Uh, when you are born, given life, a record of live birth is created as prima facie evidence of your life. The New Zealand equivalent is a notification of birth for registration. It is your affidavit of life, with details that absolutely identify your living standing. It, re it records your given name as the unique title, i.e. John, to your estate. The photograph... Uh, okay, hold up, this thing is weird. Uh, okay, the photograph of your mother establishes the origin of your estate, an estate must come before a trust. In common law, your mother and the state are now trustees in an express private trust, and you are the beneficiary. You are the holder in expectancy of your estate, which will descend to you as of right when you attain the age of majority. The original trust should serve you well, but... Soon your parents are told that you must be registered. They are under no such lawful obligation, but the state is very insistent for reasons undisclosed. According to ecclesiastical law, an estate can only be held in trust by a man, but your mother was asked for her maiden name constituting maternity. Maternity it is either legit, legitimate, or natural. The former is the condition of the mother who has given birth to legitimate children while the letter while the latter is the condition of her who has given birth to illegitimate children maternity is always certain while the while the paternity is only assumed bouvier's law dictionary 1856 edition therefore all natural born children are illegitimate bastards with uncertain fatherhood having no paternal holder of their estate. When registering, an informant unknowingly makes an accusation as to your illegitimacy. Informant, a person who informs or prefers an accusation against another. Black Laws Dictionary, 2nd edition. The Status of Children Act, 1969, 2, says, For the purposes of this act, marriage includes a void marriage. So you are legally a bastard without rights. Bastard, considered as nullius filius. A bastard has no inheritable blood in him, and therefore no estate can descend to him. Do you guys understand what, what, what they just said? They're basically saying that your mom is an informant to the government, right? And you'll see it on the birth certificate. There's a section that says informant makes an accusa accusation to your Ill illegitimacy. And that's why they always ask for the mother's maiden name. Because they just said the mother cannot make a child descendable. Only the father, only the head of the household, which is the father, can have descendable children to his estate. You know what I'm saying? So if... If, they're, if the informant is saying that she's not married, what she's not doing is knowingly. That's why it's an adhesion contract. And it's fraud because they're not letting you know. But still, it's only fraud till you catch it. So basically saying that 
that you're a bastard child. You have no inheritable blood in you. <laughs> right? So, okay. Snowboard. Da -da. All right. Moreover, your name, title, is recorded in the stillborn column. A stillborn child is one incapable of living. If they do not, in fact, survive so long as to rebut this presumption of law, they cannot inherit. Black Laws, Dictionary, Second Edition. The state cannot legally claim your estate, right? Making you a ward of the state in an Estates for Life foreign site is trust. The Estates for Life created by operation of law. Fourth jointure. I, I don't know. I've never read that book. The Estate for Life is somewhat similar to the usufra of the civil law. Bouvier's Dictionary, 1856, jointure, joinder, is similar to usufra, right to derive income from property of another. I went over that in another video. Um, your record of live birth and the registrar's evidence are used to create a birth certificate bond, publicly certifying that a property title is registered as a security for the national debt. It is like a warehouse receipt for the baby, the delivered goods. Warehouse receipt, warehouse receipt, which is considered a document of title, may be the may be a negotiable instrument used for financing with inventory as security. Black Law Seven. At the same time, the bond converts your given name and family name into a trade name. Only corpor only corporations have a last name. A legal person has been created by the state as a franchise child of the parent corporation. The bond is sold to the World Bank, Bank of International Settlements, created in 1931 by the Vatican as settler of the trust. Your weight in ounces on the, birth, on the record of live birth is to calculate your market value relative to gold. Your bond becomes a registered security with the treasury uses as surety for treasury securities as treasury bonds, notes, and bills. Yeah, you're, actually, your body is used as a surety for, um, for, for a public charge. So if you're ever charged with a crime, first thing they're going to try to do is throw you in that cell. Throw you in that cell because you're being held as a surety for a crime in which all crimes in the United States are commercial. So all the bonds, they hold you for a bond, the bond's worth money. It's literally, the bond is literally worth money. And so they're making money every time you go to jail because or prison, so you can be a slave. And I think under the 13th Amendment, if you go to jail, you can be a slave, right? So slavery is alive and well. Um, so anyway, once that bond is created and you're held for it, um, you know, you're pretty much, uh, you're pretty much held, man. You're, you're pretty much worth money and they ain't gonna let you go unless you post, unless you post bond. Um, I want to show y'all something. I hope I can find it this time. I know I can never find shit for you guys. Um, ah, I know I got it right here. Um, Bonds credit. I wanted to show you guys my. Yeah, here we go. Uh, nah, this ain't it. What are you doing? So, this is my whole harmless agreement. When the constructive trust is made in court, uh, I'm not to be held for a bond. You know? So this is a pretty long document, but now it all explains how you're an artificial person um, that when a crime is committed or a statute is violated, I'm not to be held as a as a um, as a surety for a bond, and also a surety that I'll show up in court on the date given. So. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that. 
Uh, I'm going to save that for another video. So let's keep going on. Um, so you have been monetized. The people truly are the credit of the nation. However, in this corrupted system, the people's credit is effectively human capital or livestock. Although the state can seize the legal person baby as a ward of the state, if the state's investment is threatened, Department of Child Services, its greatest value is realized from the matured working adult. The perpetrators of the deception know that you could one day discover the truth and invoke your power of attorney from the age of 18. Property Law Act 2017, Section 22.1. Persons between 18 and 20 years old may do certain things except appointment or act as an attorney. Has the same effect as if the person were 20 years old. In short, you can attain the age of majority by declaring your own power of attorney from the age of 18. However, if they can, if they can somehow kill you off, legally speaking, they can claim your deceased estate, titles, real property, personal property, and spiritual property. The legal person is also a vessel in which the state has a security interest via the birth bond. When you reach full legal age, you become the master of that vessel. The living you has gone to sea and under the Admiralty, Mar Admiralty Maritime Jurisdiction, which is the law of the sea, if you are missing for several years, you can be declared legally dead by the court. The same process is applied to ships and mariners lost at sea. But you will probably voluntarily forfeit your estate. You may start work and register as a taxpayer. You may enroll on a voting register. Either way, you're transferring your estate to the legal person by registering as an accommodation party. If you decide not to register the legal person, you are a vessel lost at sea. After seven years, you died without a will and test date, so someone is appointed to manage your estate trust. And that would also go into wills too, man. Um, Actually, wills can still go in probate because you're still conveying property to uh, loved ones or, or descendants. So if you don't have the property already in trust and it has to move to another entity, then probate is going to happen. And that's probate. Courts love probate because they get about 70 or 80 percent of your estate. They love probate. That's for judges and Attorneys make money at that shit. So have your shit in the trust. An irrevocable trust, too. Not a revocable trust, because a revocable trust can be pierced. It's what they call piercing the trust. And the fucking IRS does it all the time. So if you need help running the trust, I can advise you on that. The public trust applies to the family court to manage your estate under the protection of personal and property rights of 19 property rights act of 1988 section 11 form ppr 6 application for order to administer property under the first sovereign trust established by your mother you are the holder in due course of your estate and a future creditor as a private man woman all oath bound officials are your public trustees all i got that from usep l that the Constitution appoints public officials, which are public trustees, because the Constitution is a trust. Right? The settlers, which are the people, created the government. Right? So the settlers created the government. The government is the trustees. They're supposed to enforce the Constitution, the trust, and then we're also the beneficiaries. So... So under the first trust established by your mother, you are the holder in due course of your estate and a future creditor. As a private man, woman, all oath-bound officials are your public trustees, but under a new foreign status trust, the state gains controlling interest in your estate. While the legal person only has the equitable interest, limited use, possession of all property, the state has turned the tables on you. The people are employed by the state as debtors or a private banking cartel 
which is upheld by the Private Bar Association's Guild Law Society while acting under your corporatized name. You will receive endless presentments, bills, which that employee of the state, the legal person, straw man, is obligated to pay. But the theft of your estate is based on false presumptions that cannot be proven in fact. The fundamental flaw is that in order for a birth certificate to be issued, a man or woman must first have been born on the land. Plainly, you are not really dead, so you still have living rights on the land. You are the holder in due course of your estate title. Under the Sestoy K. V. Act of, nine, of 1666, Section 4, if the supposed dead man proves to be alive, then the title is revested. Uh, remember that you all, that only you have a birthday on which you were born into the world from your mother, whereas the artificial legal person has a date of birth on which it was registered by the registrar. They are usually created on different dates. I know mine is. He who fails to assert his rights has none. All right, y'all could read this. It's a little comparison uh, chart. Oh, I yep, that's the end of it. So this is interesting, man, because this is saying how your estate has been stolen and they're using word games and they got some, they just got some weird system in the corporate United States that your parents don't even know that they're giving you up at birth. So when you go into some of these cases and they're railroading you, that's because they want to take your estate. They want to steal the money, your property, and they want to keep it for themselves. And they're going to play mind games with you. They're going to act like nothing's going on. Like, it, they're just, they're just fucking with you mentally because you're not ready for the court. You're not ready for how it operates. Um, you're not ready for the word games. Um, I'm actually learning from Yusuf that, you know, that the prosecutor, whoever brings up the charge, is actually liable uh, to, to pay the court and pay all the court fees. And that's why they have to be bonded. Um, but a lot of people don't know that. Um, and I'm still trying to figure all that stuff out, like bonds and stuff like that. Because um, every case is bonded. All crimes are commercial. All violations, all code penalties, they're all, it's all commercial. They're making money off of all that shit. So it's important for us to read and, uh, and know what the hell is going on. Now, there's a book. That I want to, oh yes, yeah, this one's called Creditors, uh, Creditors and They Bonds. You guys should read this book, man. It's a, who made this book? I forgot. But of course, I got this from Yusef. Creditors and Their Bonds, they talk about filing UCC lines of credit. This guy goes through everything, bro. Everything. This guy, he just, Breaks down the, the birth certificate, the trust, uh, money, what's money, what's not uh, lawful money, uh, UCC codes, all this stuff, man. So, and since all crimes are commercial, uh, it's best to know the UCC. Best to know the UCC. And let me tell you, there's one thing about the UCC. If you don't learn nothing else from the UCC, you should learn this right here. UCC 1-308. Right? So before signing any contract, like a ticket, uh, anything you're not sure about, especially when dealing with government or corp or municipalities, you want to sign, if you have to sign something under TDC, threat, duress, or coercion, uh, you're going to want to put um, UCC-1308 near your name, somewhere in that document. 
because what it does is that you accept the ticket or or the um, or the proposition the contract but you're you're not giving up your rights so let me just read this so UCC 1-308 performance or acceptance under reservation of rights so a a party with the explicit reservation of rights performs or promises performance or assents to performance in a manner demanded or offered by the other party does not thereby prejudice the rights reserved. That's it. That's your God-given rights, the one that the Constitution protects. Such words as without prejudice, under protest, or the like are sufficient. You could even you could either write under without prejudice or under protest, right? Which is basically threat, duress, and coercion. Um, so you're gonna want to use this. If this is the only UCC that you learn, you're not really into the UCC, which I'm not really either, but this is some powerful shit because everything's about contracts. Literally, everything's about contracts. So, I think I'm going to end it there. And, um, this is just another video I wanted to show y'all about the birth certificate. So, uh, let me know what you think. Um, read through it. Remember to read. You people got you got to learn how to crack the code, man. Um, you know, I can't do this all day, but when I get time, I get some downtime. I just read the law, man. It's just interesting to me. Uh, I'm not really trying to make money. I'm just here to help. So, um, you know, peace to the guys. Peace to Yeshua. Peace to the El Kulum, peace to Allah, peace to God, the Lord God, um, peace to Krishna, peace to all the holy prophets, uh, Muhammad, um, you know, we didn't get here by ourselves, man. The human race had to survive for us to get to this point. So we didn't make it here by ourselves. We are... We are a chain link back to our ancestors. We got the same blood running through our veins, the same ones that ran through our ancestors 10,000, 15,000, maybe even a million years ago. So if you think you did it on your own, you're a fucking fool. All right? All right, y'all. Have a good night. Peace to the God.